and welcome to another Masters 25 Draft League. This is Old Man Pool. I have not had the chance to play this format nearly as much as I would like to. I think this is actually only the third draft we've done, and I really, really enjoyed the first two, so I'm glad to be jumping back in. The release of uh, Magic Arena definitely kind of took a chunk out of my time, and so I just really haven't been drafting as much as I should be, but we're going to rectify that here. Didn't open up a fantastic rare and rugged prairie, do like Ash Barons a fair amount. I think this is actually a pretty high pick just because of how well it enables splashing, and there are a lot of cards that you really do want to use throughout the course of the draft. That having all been said, I think I'm going to just take Murder here. This is a premier black removal spell. I think it's pretty hard to go wrong first picking it here. I could see Ash Barons, honestly, but I feel like these cards, at least a couple of days ago, were coming around the table still, so I'm maybe trying to wheel it. Ooh. So we've got Swords to Plowshares here, which is probably just the pick. Best removal card ever. Not a bad follow-up to Murder, certainly. I think White-Black might not be a miserable combination. Uh, anything else really exciting here? I have been impressed with White Main Lion. Um, Counterspell is obviously solid. There's actually a surprising number of things that care about, like Cordling Outburst, Trumpet Blast. Like going wide definitely does seem to be a viable option. But we're just going to take Swords here. Ooh, man, this is kind of crazy we got this. I think we got this third pick in the last draft we posted as well. I'm pretty sure I just got to pick it here. It's a little bit of a shame that it's going to really shove us into a similar direction that we were in the last game, but I think Biden of Thassa is just pretty great. It makes combat really, really difficult for your opponent because you get to snipe off their creatures when they attack in, and then when you're going back the other way, it's pretty powerful too. Like, just drawing cards is obviously great. I'd like to be able to make, like, a Fierce Empath deck work at some point. It's actually, this is a pretty good pack in general, but I think we're just going to take the Biden here. And be perfectly happy with that. Rat Catcher, I guess. Uh, a 4-4 four -four Fear that searches up rats. Don't think that's super fantastic. Uh, Sean's Shade is a massive hoser if you're playing against a predominantly white deck. I'm not actually seeing tons here. I mean, Ambassador Oak is pretty good in green. I actually have been, I think, more impressed with Loyal Sentry than most. Rubber's Protector maybe should be the pick here, because it is a, it synergizes a lot with a lot of pretty powerful effects. I'm tempted to just take Myriad Landscape here, though. I mean, this is kind of card advantage going into the later game. I think I might just take the Protector, but I could definitely see the landscape being correct. It's a pretty good fixing card, but it also, since you have to get two lands that share a type, that can be a little bit, little bit tough. I haven't seen this card, actually. Deadly Designs. One or five or more. Oh, okay. Okay, interesting. So you can use this to blow up a couple of creatures, but it's a pretty steep mana investment. It is a two for one, though. I really liked Corona's Zealot. I got to play with this once and it seemed very, very solid. It's possible people are more aware of it now, so they might uh, play around it a little bit better. But this is a pretty big beating. Ghost Ship I like as well. Loyal Sentry. I don't know, we're looking very dangerously close to just playing another blue-white, like, dirtily defensive deck. But I do think that the Zealot's good. Hard to pass it up. Ooh, heavily, Heavy Arbalist coming around this late maybe is a sign. Oh, that's funny. I never noticed that he has like an umbrella here. I think we're just going to take the Heavy Arbalist just because there's such a cool out if we do end up getting a couple of horseshoe crabs. Blue seems kind of cut, but on the other hand, the fact that no one's picked the Arbalist means that maybe no one's in that deck. And if no one's in that deck, that's a big payoff. So that's pretty speculative. I'm not really sure if we'll get there, but... Well... Horseshoe Crab. Are we going to do it? I think we got to do it, right? Oh, it's going to be so sweet. Uh, Ghost Ship would be cool. Noble Templar is obviously good, but we're just taking Crab. We're just taking Crab. We're going to do this. I have faith. Oh, <gasps> Triskaidekaphobia. Oh, I guess I won't make you guys endure it twice. Oh, man, I love this card. No, no, we're on Crab. Team Crab this time. Team Crab. I'm not even going to look at it. Oh, it hurts me. It hurts so deeply. I guess I'll take Blue Elemental Blast as a sideboard card. Oh, man, I'm sure you guys can just hear like the tragedy in my voice here, though. 
I mean, Retraction Helix is good, although it's not nearly as good as a lot of the other options with Crab. Let's take the Elemental Blast. This is a really, really good sideboard card when you want it. A hey, Rugged Prairie? Sure. This gives us a good out into a couple of drink colors for fixing. There is a presence of Gond here. It is does synergize with Horseshoe Crab, although it's a, quite a bit less powerful. I think I'd rather have the white that we have here than maybe start going into green. And there's a red Elemental Blast. So I guess our Master gets back enchantments. Doesn't actually work all that well with the Arbalist, but there is like the, the blue-red uncommon that we could get back. It's like Quicksilver Dagger or something like that. We can also just take Prophetic Prism. This is very good if we're ending up splashing in one direction or another. I might just take the Prism here, honestly. And Disenchant for the sideboard? Wow, that's a late and fierce empath. Alright, well, that's alright. This is only really exciting if you have some pretty, like, nasty bombs. Getting some big, like, card advantage is powerful, but... Eh, yeah, it's just okay. So Coral Helm Guide, I don't think we're ever real excited to be playing that, but maybe that's a card. We can always sideboard if we're playing against a more aggressive matchup. I'm surprised to see the uh, Ishan, or is it Isans? Isans Shade? Kind of think we're a ways past black right now. Oops, I waited too long. <laughs> Renewed Faith it is. I probably should have taken Isans Shade there, but that's okay. Uh, I guess Choking Tethers over Renewed Faith number two. And I guess Horror of the Broken Lands. So, we did see one Horseshoe Crab, one Heavy Arbalist. It's possible there just weren't a ton opened. It's also possible that maybe someone else picked up like a Crab speculatively. Although, we saw the Arbalist pretty late. I think this was like 6th pick, 7th pick. So, someone would have had to have passed it, I think. And we taking both of those does mean that we sent a little bit of a signal. Out of this pack, we've got Counterspell... Ghost Ship, Shoreline Ranger. We, I guess we could just take Darien. This is like kind of a must answer card. It's kind of cool because if we're ever dealt damage, it. I guess we could use the Heavy Arbalist to like make creatures. I'm trying to think of a way that we really abuse this. If they have a removal spell, it's good. Otherwise, they can't like it seriously attack with like flyers and the like. Maybe we should just take it. Counter spell's good. So is the Shoreline Ranger. So is Ghost Ship. Maybe we just take Darien though. I'm not actually positive if this card's good or not, but let's take it here. Hillary of the Sleepless. So we could definitely splash that. We also just take like Dragon's Eye Savants. I actually like this card quite a bit. It's a very good defensive card. Battle Mage Infiltrator is pretty solid too, though. There's actually a couple of cards we want here. I mean, we don't have to be in blue. We're a little bit light on playables, but maybe our black ends up being pretty okay. So I guess which of these would we rather have? I guess pillory, and we're more in white than we are in blue right now. I guess let's take that. Exclude. That's a pretty good late exclude. There's also Man of War here. Both are great. Yeah, let's just take the exclude though. This is pretty good card advantage, powerful counter spell. There's that flash. Still don't really know how good this card is. It's kind of sweet with Urbis protect Protector. I definitely could see just like Shoreline Ranger being better here, but maybe we should take this and see. Just like the Enter the Battlefield thing for like a Protector isn't that absurd, and the Flash effect just doesn't seem that great. Maybe I'm underrating this card though. Yeah, I think maybe this is absurd, but I think I'm just gonna take Shoreline Ranger. I like this card a lot. Well, no, let's take Flash. Let's let's see. It's early in the format, at least kind of early in the format. Ooh, late sift here. Pretty happy with that. I think this is better than Blue Sun Zenith just because it's consistently cheaper. Blue Sun Zenith is powerful, but you have to go pretty deep before you're happy with it. And sift is good, pretty much anytime you can cast it. Conflux. Don't think we're quite. That heavy on our fixing. We haven't seen too many of their accumulated knowledges, which makes me a little bit less excited for that. We've got Armancer, which could bring back Pillory, also Biden, potentially. Yeah, I guess let's take an Armancer. 
I'm not sure we're actually really ending up in the right colors here, although we keep seeing some kind of late picks too, like Murder of Crows, this late is great. Had another one? Ooh. Man, I want Loyal Sentry and Dragon's Eye Savants too, but I think we can't pass on Murder of Crows. We did not see another Horseshoe Crab. Maybe if we pick up one more, we can still get there, but... Alright, a lot of blue wheels, so I think blue is pretty open. I take that back. Uh, Ghost Ship or another Ranger? I like the Ranger because it does cycle. Or oh, I guess we didn't take Ranger before. What did we take over that? We took Flash, that's right. We followed our heart, sort of. I guess like flashing and murder of crows or something's pretty disgusting. There's also Willbender, which I guess is kind of fun. I mean, what ghost ship? Nah, eh, I think it's either way. Ghost ship's pretty good. Shoreline Ranger is also pretty solid, though. The island cycling is something that you really want a lot of the time. So I'm feeling this, though. I think we want a little bit more to help go up the ground, and then we'll just let like big flyers kind of take over for us. I do have to apologize, this deck looks very similar to the last deck we drafted, but hopefully you'll, you guys will forgive me. I didn't pick Triskaidekaphobia. Like, that's gotta count for something, right? Okay, the Savants came back around, happy with that. I definitely could see playing the Zoatic, I assume is that you say that? Caverns? But I like making sure our mana is pretty good, especially when we're playing things like Ghost Ship that want triple blue, or Horseshoe Crab that wants lots of blue sources. And Savants is a pretty nice defensive card. I think this is something this deck wanted. Uh, not much to do with Brainstorm. And not much to do with Rashadden's port. I mean, maybe this is just powerful enough that we should take it. I don't think this is something this deck wants particularly highly. But sure, maybe we should take Nihil Spellbomb there in case we randomly need to hose an opponent's graveyard strategy. Did get a Retraction Helix back? If we get another Horseshoe Crab, that'll probably make the deck. And another one, and Blue Sun Zenith, and totally lost. I think Blue Sun Zenith's gonna be a little bit slow. I might take the one totally lost, though. This isn't bad. It's a little bit expensive, but it is a powerful effect. Ah oh, man, no one's brave enough to go the Conflux route. It's obviously too sweet to pass, and when you get second to last. Wow, and that's a late assembly worker. Especially considering that we did see a couple of the uh, self-assemblers come around. Just no one wanted to take this, I guess. Alright. Like Cortisar a lot, although it will hopefully wheel, considering how blues or how open blue's been. Coalition Relic? Probably not bad. I mean it's kind of a double ramp spell. It's a little bit slow. We do have a lot of top end. I think that seems pretty okay. I yeah, wouldn't say no to another assembly worker, I guess. But yeah, let's take Coalition Relic. This seems sweet. And we're praying for horseshoe crabs. If I get one or two more, we'll be very happy to play with the Arbalist. But we do need to get a couple more. Brosh, Sky Raider of Care. Pretty cool. Oh, it's the Cobalt's one. Alright. Well, there's Quicksilver Dagger Dagger, uh, excuse me. That does work very well with Horseshoe Crab. And it we even have a Rugged Prairie and a Prophetic Prism to kind of enable it. I think I'm okay with taking that. It is off color, and I'm not sure we'll end up playing it. We I think we need another crab. So we're a little bit light on creatures in general, but that's pretty good, right? I don't think things like borrowing 100,000 arrows are particularly exciting anyway, so. Coalition Relic's any mana color, right? Yeah. So Treasure Keeper here. Ranker. Oh, there's a crab, though. Yeah, I think we just gotta take crab. Too sweet. Gotta do it. Too sweet. And another source of Plowshares is really solid. Uh, Loyal Sentry would be good, too. But, yeah, taking swords, I think, is definitely the pick here. So we're heavy enough blue here. It's possible that we cut, like... Uber's Protector, well, it's our old double, double white. They're kind of on the top end. I want to have as many blue sources as possible. Okay, and we got another crab. Nice, 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 nice. All right, yep, all in on crab deck. We got this, boys. Okay, there's another Assembly Worker. There's an Arcane Denial, which I actually was a little bit happier with than I thought it would. I would be. 
Although we were playing it in Triskaidekaphobia, <laughs> and so digging towards the our one win condition was important. I think I'm just going to take a Ranger at this point. Island Cycling is nice, especially in a deck that really does want to hit its Island Drops. The Worker's fine, although I think you really want Self Assemblers before you're crazy happy with them. And Ranger's just solid. Definitely kind of wish we'd taken the Ashburns over Murder first pick. Ashburns would be a lot better in the deck as it is now. If we were playing Murder in the deck, we eh, it would depend how the deck looked, which one we want more. I do like Ashburns a lot. Well, there is another accumulated knowledge. I think we're a little bit too late for that now. What's Notion Thief do? An opponent would draw a card except the first one he or she draws in each of their draw steps. Instead, that player skips that draw, and you draw a card. Huh. Maybe a really good sideboard card. Like, this just really, really hose some decks. They, like, play Sift or something. That's pretty absurd. I think the way it'll work with Sift is we end up drawing three, and they discard a card. And again, then the game is just over. <laughs> I'll take Notion Thief. Seems cool. Okay. Loyal Sentry. I like. I'm just taking Path of Peace here, though. Inji with the Spires. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool, actually. You just keep turning your mountains into big, dangerous threats. Yeah, I, I think I would like Loyal Sentry, but Path of Peace has just got to be too good to pass. Huh, too good to path? Sorry. Uh, let's take Cortasar. Uh, Jalira is powerful, but we're not crazy high on creatures. Kind of high variance, too. I'm not sure I'm always super in love with Jalira. God's willing, got to protect those horseshoe crabs, right? This deck may just not do anything. Like, we actually don't have too many defensive cards. And it might be the horseshoe crab, just, uh... I mean, Heavy Arbalist is super expensive. <laughs> I don't know, I have faith, we're gonna get there. Guess we'll take the... Inox Survivalist here. Could take Presence of Gond. I think we have a couple of good payoffs already. I think we probably will play Aramancer, actually. We'll bring that back in. Eh, maybe not. Eh, we'll see. Eh, maybe Presence we want. And Flooded Grove did come around, so that... Well, how much do we actually want it? Not a ton, right? I don't know if we need it. I think I'm going to take Counterspell. We... This is nice for another little bit of early interaction. Phantasmal Bear is a sideboard card, I guess. Over the second Choking Tethers. And Echoing Courage, we can make all of our Horseshoe Crabs 3 fives. Come on, guys. We gotta do it. First catcher. All right, so I'm not sure that this deck is fantastic. I am going to call it sweet, though. Let's see. Let's group our creatures out. Yeah, definitely a little bit lighter on twos than I would like, although we do have some like pretty good removal, cheap removal, sorts of plowshares, and counterspell that can get there. I guess we're playing Flash just for random value with like Murder of Crows and the like. Flashing in a murder of crows and sniping something seems pretty powerful. So I suppose the question here becomes, what are we cutting? Maybe pillory? Don't have a real, real easy splash. I mean, pathetic prism definitely helps, but maybe that's not something we need to really force. We have coalition relic too, I guess. We totally lost can say goodbye to. I do want to keep God's Willing, I think. I feel like we got the crabs. Maybe we should have tried to pick up like a couple more attraction helixes or something else powerful. But we really, really do want to be able to find Heavy Arbalist or Quicksilver Dagger to go off. I think after doing some more soul searching, we should maybe cut either Darien or Urbis Protector. I really don't know how good Darien is. Maybe it's a sideboard card. Seems pretty bad against removal since it doesn't do anything a lot of the time. Like it comes in, gets killed, you didn't get any advantage for your 6 drop. Although flashing it in, oh man, flashing in Darien seems sweet. That's probably kind of pie in the sky. If our opponent swings, we take like 6 or something. Flash in Darien, create 6 soldiers. That's what we call value, friends. I really don't know if this card is any good. I was kind of erring on the side of not being good. Since it 
like it costs you a card even though the mana kind of ends up being the same yeah i don't know i think i'm gonna cut flash maybe this is just not sweet but i'm gonna cut flash i'm gonna cut darian and probably urbis protector i just don't think that's really what this deck's kind of trying to do i really don't want to cut any of our spells or any of our other like cheaper creatures yeah we're just gonna call this horseshoe crab dot deck we got three of them that's awfully sweet even if we uh don't have a fantastic win record i'm pretty sure we can get to kill somebody with heavy arbalist and that's the real dream do we play rashad and port maybe that's another sideboard card if my opponent's being really greedy with their with their lands but i think that this deck just wants to maximize the number of islands we can play let's bring in rugged prairie for sure as that helps us splash for quicksilver dagger add some lands I don't think we need any mountains beyond the Rugged Prairie, Coalition Relic, and Prophetic Prism. I think we're doing okay there. Deck only recommends three planes. I think that might be a bit crazy. But maybe we go like 511. We do want to find one fairly badly for swords early on. But I really do want to maximize the number of blue we have for Horseshoe Crab too. I think let's look at something like that. All right, the deck is sweet. I am not 100% sure that it's good, but it does look sweet. Can't say uh, no to three horseshoe crabs, right? Well, I will see you guys for match one. Welcome back for match one. I think we've got a keep here. It's maybe not a crazy exciting keep, but I do think it's good enough. We need to find any land that we can play Coalition Relic and Ghost Ship. And I guess we can kind of play most everything in our hand if we find any one land. It's a little bit slow. We may get run over against an aggressive deck, but I think this is good. Okay, Curse Catcher. Not as bad as Phantasmal Bear. When they were tapping a mana there, I was like, oh dear, the game is already over. But I mean, Curse Catcher is like good. Well, yeah, is it good? I'm not even sure if it's good. Hopefully it's not just the beginning of an aggressive beatdown deck, though. I can see you playing that in a deck with like lots and lots of cheap aggressive creatures to just to try and keep your opponent off removal for a little bit longer. If the game goes long, though, Curse Catcher doesn't do all that much. A lot of times it's just going to be a 1-1 one, one for 1. I do need to remember to play around it, though. No play on turn 2 is great. And we're not going to cast Exclude right on time, because I think we want to hit our Coalition Relic in time, but... Our opponent didn't have a crazy fast start, so I think we're in okay shape. Opponent Cycling Shoreline Ranger, just to go and grab an island. Man, this card is so good. When you want it to be a land, it's a land. When you want it to be a big flyer, it's a big flyer. I think we're probably would be a little bit. Yeah, as is ooh, horseshoe crab. Alright, my opponent's doing it. Horseshoe crab off. I think we're playing coalition relic here. And just make sure that our, our lands keep coming together. And I guess we potentially could play murder of crows next turn. Coalition relic's pretty good. Especially on turn three. So what are we afraid of here? We are afraid of... I mean, Presence of Gond would be pretty good, actually. Okay, just getting in with the Crab, I think, is a good sign for us. Okay, we're going to put a Charge Counter on it. This is sweet art for the Coalition Relic, too. Okay, yep. Coalition Relic comes off the stack. And I guess we're adding blue here. Okay, so do we just play Murder of Crows? Once left up counter magic potentially. Hmm. Getting our murder countered would be pretty bad for us. I don't really want any of these cards countered, but I think Murder of Crows might be our worst outcome. We could. So we're playing Island regardless. We're up to six mana. We could morph the Chronozealot and keep up Exclude. 
That's pretty conservative. Maybe don't hate that, though. I think it's very likely my opponent's got some sort of counter magic here. Yeah, I think let's cast the Zealot. And pass with Exclude up. Like I said, this may be overly conservative, but my opponent does have to do something or the Zealot blocks these cards fairly well anyway. Okay, Cycling Elvish Aberration. It just looks like they need lands here, then. They did miss a land drop last turn. Yeah, I don't know, counter magic seems very likely still. But now they got to be thinking the same thing. If they play a reasonable threat and we exclude it, it looks pretty bad. Epic Confrontation. Okay, well, that does... I mean, that's, that's good for my opponent. Especially considering that the Zealot's a pretty high-value card, but... Well, I guess that's true. Actually, keeping up Exclude was pretty bad, wasn't it? Because they can always sacrifice the Curse Catcher. Alright, well, that was a, a misplay for sure. I even said we needed to remember it, and then I didn't remember it. Coral Helm Guide. Hmm. If only they played that the other direction. Could just force them to get rid of the Curse Catcher. Is that worth our mana? Probably not. I think we're just going to try and stick Murder of Crows next turn, and that's going to be a pretty big blocker, which hopefully they just can't get through, especially given how few mana they or how low on mana they are. I didn't play that turn very well, though. Keeping up Exclude was definitely incorrect, just because of the Curse Catcher. It actually, the way the plays ended up working out, it didn't matter too much, but yeah, that was not excellent, not excellent. I found another land. Means we are up to seven here, which means I think actually playing. Um, well, what do we do still? Like, we still can't really keep up Exclude super happily. I think we still, we just play Murder then. We could play Ghost Ship and keep up Regenerate. That's actually maybe better. Then my opponent just can't remove this probably. Yeah, I kind of like that, actually. This is a little bit more mana efficient. Well, I don't know. Maybe Murder of Crows is just more powerful. This blocks just about as well, though. And it's better against removal. It also lets us keep up Exclude, although doing that into Curse Catcher is bad, obviously. Okay, just letting my opponent get in for two here. Not a super absurd, like it's a fine play. Well, not really fine. We're pretty happy with that. Taking two every turn. Think we can beat that? If we ever find our own horseshoe crab, Quicksilver Dagger, we'll do pretty quick work on this board too. Okay, let's remember to put a counter on. We can cast Biden of Thassa and eat my opponent's Curse Catcher next turn. Uh, let's just keep adding blue here. We can also play the Quicksilver Dagger and just shoot my opponent's Ghost Ship. Oh no, it only does damage to player, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right. So blue it is. I think let's play Biden and try and snipe some of what my opponent's got going on. That, again, lets us keep up Exclude, which is kind of sweet. Although I think we're just going to force my opponent to attack in next turn and hope that we can kind of wreck them. This is maybe a little bit fragile, because if my opponent's got a pump spell, they could maybe break through on the ghost ship and then we lose out on some mana, but... It's entirely possible that my opponent just is in a tough spot here. And we'll know if they have a trick or not, because they have to choose... Or I guess they don't. They could wait for us to force it. Okay, Shoreline Ranger, they're tapping out. Actually, no, nah, let's just exclude this, right? Yeah, let's just exclude this. Alright, I feel like we're making pretty good plays here. We're taking maybe a little bit longer than we need to to get there, but... Hopefully my opponent doesn't have just a crazy Wombo with Horseshoe Crab that gets there, too. Oh, yeah, we missed... 
we could have uh, put a counter on the coalition relic. Pretty sure that was a mistake. <laughs> I said right after I said we were making good plays, but it's all right. Okay, so rugged prairie. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight at this point. I think we play Murder of Crows and then use Bident on my opponent's next turn and try and eat a couple more creatures. And then we'll get to start cycling too, which is pretty good with Murder of Crows. So we get to eat a couple of my opponent's creatures. Yeah. Bident of Thassa it looked, was really good last draft. It's looking pretty good again here. And we're going to remember to give a token to the Coalition Relic this time. We could have potentially played Prophetic Prison that turn as well, so that was a little bit of a mistake. But I guess we wouldn't have kept up Regenerate for Ghost Ship, but given how my opponents played, I don't think it matters. Okay, are they going to pay to make unblockable? They're not. Uh, hmm. I'm a little bit worried about tricks. I guess maybe let's do something like this. Because I'd rather Murder of Crows survive. And this means that if he's got a plus two effect, it's okay. Giant Growth would still wreck us pretty good. Hmm. I guess Murder of Crows will still get some triggers for us. And if they don't have anything, which I guess they don't, we're very, very happy. So at this point, I think we're just going to cycle away Prophetic Prism, probably. Well, I guess we'll just pitch lands if that's the other option. Prophetic Prism is just kind of a cycle anyway, though. Okay, yeah. Would much rather have Sift and Quicksilver Dagger. Yeah, this is great that the board's kind of close to equal. Uh-oh, this looks big, though. Holy locks it on. Okay, so we can keep that at bay with the Ghost Ship. That is a problem. Oh man, I didn't put a counter on it. Ugh. I'm not using the Coalition Relic to its maximum. So let's utilize Sift here. And I guess we just should use Rugged Prairie. Yeah. Okay, so we did find Horseshoe Crab, which means we can start going off with Dagger. Pitch of Plains. Play Island. And then next turn, we force attacks, eat the crab, block ghost ship, and then play horseshoe crab next turn. Yeah, I think we need to keep this from attacking. Yeah, just pass here. Holy locks down is big. That is cause for concern. Yeah, let's force an attack. Oop. Ooh, definitely don't want to concede. Blue. And we'll let the white locks done beat the crap out of Ghost Ship, but that's okay. It's a blue regenerator. Just as Richard Garfield intended. Okay, so we get one more trigger off the Murder of Crows here. Yes, we do want to draw a card. And we're spitch the planes here since Island goes well with the horseshoe crab. And getting my opponent's horseshoe crab off the table felt nice there too. Ooh, Path of Peace is good. We just want to get the Woolly Locks done again for a couple of cards. That seems pretty solid. Yeah. Let's Path of Peace here. Oh, man, I should have kept. Or blew up. That was a mistake. It's okay. I think it'll work out, but that was... Should have top double white, probably. Well, no, because we want Rugged Prairie active. Anyway. Don't think it's going to matter, because we can still play this island. And let's swing with both of these guys. Down to 16 cards in the deck. And draw two more here. Uh, this is a May effect. So if we end up getting really close to. Counterspell is great. 
if we get really close to milling, Biden won't do it to us at least. Okay, and swords is good too. I feel like we're riding pretty high at this point. I think my opponent would need something pretty fantastic to drag their way back into this game. Not to say that there aren't cards that would do it, but... And if we can just counter something here, it's going to be great. Orf. Uh, I guess we counter it anyway. We still have swords to plowshares if my opponent finds something else that's really important. And I don't actually know the set well enough to know what all the dangerous morphs are. Okay, Kroos and Colossus. Big fatty. I guess he couldn't actually quite play it. It doesn't seem fantastic. It seems worse than like Wooly Loxodon, for instance. I guess it's good with like a cloud shift, though. All right, what are we sideboarding? Blue green aggressive creatures. Well, kind of aggressive, sort of just like random mid range creatures. Presence of Gond, I guess, works fairly well to make my opponent chump. Clearly, the sleepless seems okay. Notion Thief. Didn't really see tons and tons of draw. Fully lost seems okay, given that my opponent's trying to play some pretty big stuff. Red Elemental or Blue Elemental Blast doesn't have much going for it. I don't think I like Flash. Darian's may be good, just because my opponent hasn't played too much. Disenchant might also be good, since they showed us a Horseshoe Crab, but we didn't see any of the cards that go along with it. I think Ghost Ship is obviously fantastic. I think I do want kind of most of these. I'm actually not sure what we cut for Totally Lost, even. Maybe Zealot's not crazy fantastic? It's mostly good against kind of like smaller sort of mid-range creatures, which my opponent maybe looks like they're trying to play it truly on the top end, where I think like Totally Lost might just be better. Is that crazy to take this out? It might be. Anyway, I think we're going to run this. Okay, back for game two. We've got, I think, a pretty good hand here. Let's go ahead and keep this. We've got Counterspell into Court Hussar, and then eventually a Merger of Crows with God's Willing. Seems pretty solid, kind of across the board. My opponent has a really great like start. Potentially they get un in underneath Counterspell, but I think we're probably going to be able to hit something with it. Ooh, no second land drop. Wow, did they... Misclick there? So, interesting question here between Prophetic Prism or Counterspell. I think we're just going to play Prism. My opponent's playing a lot of big spells, so Counterspell will have like good utility later on in the game. Getting Prism out early seems kind of nice, especially if my opponent's missing land drops. They just kind of keep a greedy hand, maybe with a bunch of good... Okay, they did find another land. They may have just f 6 their turn. Okay, I don't really care about Dragon's Eye Savants. We're trying to get in in the air mostly anyway. If that's their best two drop play, I feel like we're doing okay as well. Let's play Cortisar. Okay, we're gonna take the murder of crows here. I don't think it's really close. We have five mana already, so those guys on the bottom in any order, and then pass the turn. If they play land here, I'm thinking maybe... No, weird. So one land keep with Dragon's Eye Savant. They've got to have some pretty good stuff in the next couple of turns, I would think. Uh, Ghost Ship's a good draw. I'm kind of worried. I kind of want to keep up Counterspell, but I think we are just going to try and press the advantage here. Okay, opponent concedes. Well... Maybe not the best second game there, but yeah, I wonder what my opponent's hand looked like. I'm always curious in these sort of games, because I'm sure there are, there are cans that I've kept that are similar to that, but I mean, Savants is good, but it's good mostly in decks where you really want to hit your land drops and play like big flyers or big beasts a little bit later on in the game. Yeah, I wonder what was over there. Anyway, happy to pick up match one. I'll see you guys for match two in a sec. Hello and welcome back to match two. I think we've got a mulligan here, unfortunately. 
Yeah, I mean, we've got a couple of top-end cards, or curves kind of top-heavy. We do have Prophetic Prism, which means if we found any land, potentially, I mean, we get a free draw, which maybe means that we can find another land, and we can cast Swords. I think this is still a little bit too risky. This hand's... I think it's better. It's not fantastic either, but I think I do think it is better. Put that on the bottom. I mean, we still get run over by very aggressive draws, although... Well, actually, Island can be one of the more aggressive colors. Given there's, like, Phantasmal Bear and the uh, black-blue wall thing. I can't remember what it's called. Okay, blue-blue. My opponent wants to counterspell our Prophetic Prism. I am okay with that. Try and land Horseshoe Crab next turn. Okay. When I'm willing to let that resolve. Quicksilver Dagger. Okay, with Horseshoe Crab in play, Quicksilver Dagger is dangerous. Opponent just going and grabbing another land. Looks like they may be stuck on blue. It's possible that they are mono blue, but... Merfolk Looter is solid here. Just going to give my opponent a pretty steady stream of advantage as the game goes on. Ooh, we do have the Arbalist, though. If we ever get Horseshoe Arbalist online, it's pretty good. That is pretty good. Yeah, let's put our Crab into play. I think next turn Quicksilver Dagger might be the play. Yeah, we'll see. I kind of like getting this down when my opponent can't counter it, though, especially because we have two payoffs in hand. It is awfully expensive to get this card attached to something. But once you've got that 7 mana investment, Horseshoe Crab just starts killing stuff, so... Bastard Oak. Okay. Another blue-green matchup. So I guess we're probably playing, like, Ghost Ship this turn. We could play Quicksilver Dagger, ping once, untap, ping again. Draw two cards. I think Ghost Ship might be more important right now, though. We just should be deploying threats. Quicksilver Dagger is a little bit better when the game reaches kind of a like more parody game state. Let's play Ghost Ship. This will probably be able to block what my opponent's going for with like Ambassador Elk or Ambassador Oak. Ambassador Elk would be a sweet card too, though. Right now, I think we mostly just have to avoid getting blown out over the next couple of turns. Because between the Arbalist and the Quicksilver Dagger and a Horseshoe Crab already in play, if my opponent can't kill the Crab, we're just going to go off pretty quick. Opponent pitches their own Ghost Ship. That's concerning. That means they've got something big they're trying to find land drops for. Mana War. Okay, that's good. Bouncing Ghost Ship? Yeah, Man of War is pretty good. Provides my opponent a little bit of extra pressure, adds to his own board state. Sounds solid. Yeah, we'll go down to 17 here. Bident. Bident doesn't do much for us right now. I mean, I guess it could let us, like, snipe the Elf Warrior, but I think we're actually just going to have to accept the fact that we got time walked and replay Ghost Ship here. Not fantastic. Certainly not fantastic. Wish this was just a pinging effect, but... We'll have to settle for infinite card draw, I suppose. And hope this isn't a counterspell. If they've got counter magic here... Eh, let's just say things could go poorly pretty quickly. Wow, does not loot with the looter. They just have a perfect hand. Literally the best hand in their deck. You Mori. Okay. I do not have a legendary creature. I have a legendary enchantment. <laughs> okay, opponent gets a, a cheap 5-5. Five, five. Fair enough. Hey, we're getting kind of kind of beat down here. Opponent can't attack this turn at least. But we will die. Like, we're not that far off. 
So this turn we play Arbalist with the intent to equip next turn. And then we've still got Ghost Ship up. That seems okay. And then the Horseshoe Crab can start blowing stuff up. It's still going to be a little bit of a race. My opponent's got a much better board position than we do. But if they can't kill the Horseshoe Crab, that can take over. It's a little bit slow. We're going to take at least 5 damage this turn because we just can't... Well, I, that's, that's a lie, sorry. Well, we can block with Ghost Ship. They're coming in for sure. Okay. So we take four damage, kind of regardless. Let's go ahead and block. I'm still loving this uh <laughs> blue card with regenerate. This might, is this the only card in the set that has regenerate? It might be. It's kind of hilarious when you think about it. Like no green, no black regenerators. No, there's the uh the swamp cycling black card that regenerates. I lied. Lore scale quaddle. Okay. That will have to be killed. Okay, opponent didn't have an answer to the Arbalist, though. We can equip this up and start blowing stuff up, right? So this costs four to equip. One, two, three, four. So we're going to have three untaps. So for a total of four shots, we kill a quaddle. That's one. Kill... Iwamori, and that way we don't have to keep up regenerate. Yeah, which means I guess we have to do that all now. We also don't want my opponent to pump. They have a like instant speed interactive spell here. We weep a little bit, but they haven't been able to remove it yet. Okay. Let's kill the lower scale quaddle. Oh, that's true. So that's true. Remember, Folk Looter will let it get grow a little bit. Let's kill it. When it draws, then discards. So in that case, we may just have to accept we're taking five this turn and kill like the Man War and the Merfolk Looter instead. Still seems pretty good. So I guess we killed Merfolk Looter. And then finish for now. Okay, that was pretty cool. That's my first time going off the crab, but it felt sweet. We just mowed down two creatures and we're just beginning here, so. Yeah, my opponent's gotta be pretty terrified. We have one more activation of the crab if we need it. Man of War. Okay. So that's going to cost us some. They bouncing. It'll be interesting actually to see what they bounce. Probably. Man, I don't know. Probably Ghost Ship. In for a lot. Yeah. Can't do anything about that. We still take like nine damage here. It's a lot, but Horseshoe Crab's going to be able to do a lot this turn, too. Let's untap our Horseshoe Crab. And right now we're taking 11, which means I think we might as well block the Elf, because if they have a pump spell, we're probably dead. Well, I guess we're taking 9. So if they have, like, Giant Growth, the end it hasn't quite hit, whereas if my opponent... So we could block, take 10, go to 3. If they have a giant growth effect, we're dead in that case. I guess we wait until they use a giant growth, or we just go down to 3. And they can still kill a mana war end of turn. Yeah, I think that's our best line. Let's go to block, and we're just going to pass here. Okay, so we maybe two, two more damage than necessary, but we played around dying to like giant growth. I'm pretty sure it's in the set. <laughs> Maybe it's not. Maybe you guys are all chuckling at me, but that's okay. Hopefully that extra two points of damage doesn't matter. 
So this next turn though, we've got six activations, so seven activations of the crab. I think we're looking okay. <laughs> Machine gun crab. This is, I don't know if you guys have seen the, there's a fantastic YouTube video that's like the lone gunner of Helm's Deep or something to that effect. Pretty good. I recommend it. But it's very, uh, <laughs> I can see this. He's just mowing down everything. Okay, so this takes three shots to kill. Four, five, six. We have seven all told. Oh, this tree doesn't untap. So actually, we only have six. That's okay. So we untap. And start shooting. Untap. Start shooting. Untap. Keep shooting. Yeah, this feels sweet. I, I'm enjoying this set an awful lot. We won games of Triskaidekaphobia and Horseshoe Crab and Heavy Arbalist. Life seems good. Ooh, they do have a pump spell. Echoing Courage. Okay. So did we play a land? I actually can't remember. No, we did not. Blow that up. Gotta go all the way at this point. And then we play planes, play ghost ship, take two. Alternatively, we can just kill off the ambassador oak. If my opponent's got another mana war, we're out. Get island cycle for two. I guess we keep this up, so we like... Yeah, so we actually can still untap twice. We can untap, untap, and still try and block. Yeah, that's right. So play that land, and we will pass to my opponent. Or do we just want to kill it now? No, we have to wait till my opponent's turn. Because if we want to be able to block the mana war. It feels like it should be pretty intuitive, just start like shooting your opponent as much as you can, but... Sift. Okay, Sift is quite good. Doesn't actually get my opponent there this turn, but does provide a lot of value. Which is an island, still has a forest. Untap. Again, we lose if they've got a combat trick, so we might as well block. Block like so. I'm like definitely afraid we're gonna ruin this somehow. Prophetic Prism showing its worth here. Okay, opponent concedes. Woohoo! The lone horseshoe crab. <laughs> oh, that was sweet. That was sweet. Uh, yeah. So we just have to hope my opponent doesn't have any removal again. I guess they did have a couple of mana ores, but we got there. Cool. All right, all right. So blue green again. Looks like a little bit better version of the deck, maybe. Definitely has the potential to run us over. Still don't like Blue Elemental Blast. I don't think we like Totally Lost because our opponent's not going quite as high up the curve. I don't think Phantasmal Bear is quite what we want either, though. Didn't see anything for Disenchant. Maybe Pillory? I'm less and less impressed with Quicksilver Dagger, unfortunately, the longer this game has gone on. But the problem is it's one of the few things we do have that really does combo with Horseshoe Crab. Maybe like Presence of God is just better, honestly, than the dagger. Probably in this match if it is. Let's play Presence. Let's pitch the Prairie. Add in one green source, I guess? Yeah, let's add in one green. And I don't think we want anything else. Okay, I think we do keep this hand. Have more or less perfect mana kind of too many of too many land cards though let's keep our opponent's mulligan down to six we do have a fairly good defensive hand i think we'll ugh, don't like drawing another land there i think we'll probably try and morph the dragon's eye savants well maybe not actually we don't have a blue card to reveal right now opponent does have a two drop 
root hatch and tuco where it's dealt damage you get tokens doesn't seem oh that many tokens okay so the morph could be pretty sweet actually with that card because if you like overkill it i guess it runs into the savants pretty harmlessly that's kind of sweet Ugh, another land you're killing me deck you're killing me I guess we're just really setting up for the horseshoe crab, right? Except for they're, they're not enough islands. No. No excuses. Yeah, it's actually a pretty cool card. The morph is super sweet because you, like, swing in, your opponent's like, oh yeah, I'll block your 2-2, two, two, and you're like, okay, I get 7 tokens. I guess that's probably a little bit aggressive, but... Stampede Driver. Creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1, and gain trample. Do too much right now. Not a bad card, though. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen a lot of the cards, actually, as it turns out. Man, another land. Well, this Dragon's Eye Savant better live. We do have Swords to Plowshares. They really try and break through with, like, a combat trick. Ooh, I think we just have to kill that now. All right. That's too dangerous to be left alive. <laughs> oh man, this is like ultimate punishment here. We kept a five hand or a five card hand and cons or then draw an additional four lands. On the other hand, it looks like my opponent. Ooh, they're swinging. I mean, all right. Well, I guess they might just be in for one point of damage. Yeah. No follow up. Nothing good. Please. I know we've got five cards in hand, but we really have zero. Oh my goodness, the struggle. It's okay, we're going to draw Crab and Arbalist, and everything will go right from there on out. Maybe my opponent's like, oh man, they have to have counter magic at this point. Maybe it's not in our best interest to F6 here, just to try and stall them on playing spells. Don't do it. All right. Well, either they don't have anything. Oh, horseshoe crab, the dream. Uh, yep. I guess this will stop the one damage a turn if that is a thing. Cool. We drew a non-land. I will take it. Opponents oh, maybe like super flooded too. They didn't miss one land drop. So, can't pitch it here. They could have a trick. How sad are we if the horseshoe crab dies? Kind of sad. Not crazy sad. Is the answer. We don't have anything that really synergizes with it right now. Yeah, giant growth. We will have to deal with it. I think that's okay for my opponent. Like, I think I make that attack too. But I think that we actually kind of just want to get Giant Growth out of their hand. We have a couple more Horseshoe Crabs in the deck. But we have very, very few lands left in the deck, fortunately. So that's not quite true. We have another six. Still impressive. We're down to less than a quarter chance of drawing more lands. Brainstorm. Brainstorm without a Flushel. Flushel? <laughs> Brainstorm without a uh, Shuffle really isn't all that exciting. Probably found some action. Nope. Cortisar. Cool. This is a card. He'll draw us through to uh, another non-land, I imagine. I hope. On countering this. Mystic Snake. Alright, alright. That's solid. Uh, Yeah, still not much we can do. So now we're taking two points a turn. Pabu Climber. Yeah, my opponent's just building out a board here. But I mean, I guess that's just kind of what happens when you don't play anything for turns and turns. And the salt is real over here. I'm sure you guys can tell, but the salt is real over here. Let's block. And Stampede Driver's activated ability is starting to look more dangerous. A Merfolk Looter. What I wouldn't have given for a looter this game. Given? Gived? Something. 
All right, well, let's play Horseshoe Crab. And be aware that we still have a good number of outs with Crab. If we find the list at this point, it's pretty absurd. The opponent draws in discards and brainstorms. Still don't really love brainstorm, but I mean, it's not like we don't have good draws here. Sift would be fantastic. A couple of murder of crows. Uh, Presence of Gond would be pretty good. All right, so opponent gets to play the best of the three cards on top this turn. It looks like they're just leaving Stampede Driver back, which is a little bit awkward because now we can't really block with the Horseshoe Crab. So I guess we'll give my opponent the option to just do us five here. I don't really want to give my opponent extra tokens because we could keep from taking two here, but then they get an extra one one out of it. That's pretty bad for us. All right. Arbalus still saves us. We're looking pretty bad against the driver here, but I'm not sure you can really plan on drawing as many lands as we did either. Bident. <laughs> well, that doesn't do much, does it? I think we're just dead here. One, two, three, four. My opponent swings. We go like block, block. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess only nine technically. Uh, we can keep Horseshoe Crab alive, even with as much blue as we had. I don't think we're getting there though. All right. I've had enough. Opponent's a uh, six card keep was better than our five land hand. I guess. Ghost ship would have been fine. Okay. So, I think I still like presence. I misclicked on killing crab last game. Ha 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 ha. Uh, I don't remember. I guess that sucks if they did. But maybe Darien's just good. My opponent does seem like they kind of take a while to get going. And they have like no removal. I've seen one removal spell from them. Maybe not even that. I think it's all been combat tricks. Maybe Darien's pretty good. And actually the Zealot seemed better the Maybe we cut one horseshoe crab. All right, let's do this. Would like to play first, hopefully with a better start than the last game. And you have to toss this one back, unfortunately. Same argument, like we have Prophetic Prism and Island there, but there's a lot of hands where that just doesn't do anything, I don't think. Okay, we do have all of our mana with Prophetic Prism. We have the crab available. This could get there. Opponent Mulligan down to six as well. We're gonna keep this. And we're gonna bottom that. No more lands, goodness. And they put a card on bottom as well. Well, it's uh, been a little bit of a derp fight these last couple games. The first game was really good. It was really interesting, but yeah, counterspell. Do we keep up counterspell? Nah, I think we're playing Prism. Save Counterspell for something a little bit farther down the road. Hey, Swords of Plowshares is a good draw. We can play it off the Prism, which is nice. If they just drop like a Looter here, we'd kill it for sure. Uh, I guess it's worth getting Horseshoe Crab out there. Yeah. Can't counter anything next turn specifically. Maybe they have Counterspell. I guess that might be a reason to wait. It was not to counter it. It did pause there, though. Horseshoe Crab on its own is kind of innocuous. Like, it doesn't do all that much. Man of War. All right. Sure. In a non tempo game, that matters a lot less. And I guess we'll play it here. I'm still being pretty brazen about not leaving up Counterspell because we do have Swords to Plowshares, but we need to. We can God's willing to keep the Crab alive, although honestly we maybe should have sideboard this out too. My opponent just doesn't seem to have very much in the way of 
a legitimate removal. I guess giving protection against a combat trick is kind of good, but... Okay, they found Forest after doing a little bit of deck searching. And P Driver. Uh, kind of scary. Not super scary. Yeah, that's fine. I tap one extra blue there. Wait. They tapped three blue. No, they brainstormed. Okay. So a little bit unfortunate. If they have Counterspell, they can't leave it up now. This? Not insignificant. Should we Swords the Stampede Driver here? It is a problem eventually. I feel like it's a little premature to Swords it, though. On the other hand, that means they get to start threatening getting in damage with the Man of War. Maybe we just do. Alright, I don't actually... Like, I'm not in love with this. And if we were going to do it, we should have done it last turn, but... I think my opponent's got enough different things going on for Stampede Driver that we just wanted dead. This is a little bit awkward because we're actually down on God's Willing for a turn, but we do have Counterspell if we need to. Hopefully they don't have, like, a great fight card or something here. Yeah, it's a little bit awkward. Because if they use a combat trick, we would much rather use God's Willing. So that was a misplay for sure. Nope, not playing anything. Nothing. I am okay playing the nothing game. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we've got a lot of good draws, and a couple of draws that with Horseshoe Crab on the battlefield just kind of win us the game. If my opponent wants to counter this, I think we'll just allow it. Mystic Snake. Ah, uh, do we counterspell the Mystic Snake? I guess maybe we do. It's another 2-2, two -two, which means they can start swinging in for more damage. The built-in 2 for one's kind of annoying. It's a little bit awkward because there are definitely like more dangerous threats my opponent could have than Mystic Snake there. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe we, we just were supposed to eat that and accept that there's a bunch of different things we could find where we really want to have the counter spell to interact with my opponent, but Coalition Relic just doesn't matter that much. But it's kind of half the Coalition Relic and half giving my opponent a 2 2, right? Like, Mystic Snake isn't just a counterspell. Yeah, see, like, we'd rather have gotten rid of Ghost Ship here, but that's all right. Presence of God. All right, we're doing it. Oh, man, I forgot to tap the relic. Ah, That does miss out on one free token. That's not insignificant cost. Okay, but Presence of God is going to start getting us uh, a lot of elves. Unless they have another counter spell. Not. Yeah, so we missed out on one free elf. Hopefully it doesn't cost us in the long run. That's potentially pretty dangerous, though. It'll be cool if we kill our opponent with Crab in two different ways over this game. We still have God's Willing available to keep it alive. My opponent tries to do something sneaky like Man of War it. Hey, opponent just getting it for two. Aware of the fact that we're going to make some elves to swing next turn, so he wants to have Man of War for a blocker. Uh oh, this looks kind of big. Okay, Ambassador uh, Oak is good, but not absurd. Okay, let's make some elves. Let's untap some crabs. And do we keep up God's Willing at all times? I kind of feel like we do, honestly. We just don't want the horseshoe crab to die for any reason. Okay, and I guess let's just pass here. Like, if my opponent manages to bounce this or interacts with the presence kind of in any way, it just completely ruins the game plan. 
So even though it slows us down, not making quite as many elves as we could, keeping up God's Willing, I think, is important. Our opponent really is, hasn't even shown us removal, but this is our one game plan, so I think it's worth trying to protect it. And besides, we're going to make another 7 elves this turn. <laughs> opponent concedes. Yeah, it's possible they just do not have, like, removal in their deck, really, in these color combinations. And Horseshoe Crab is going to take over the game if you can't kill it. Well, cool. I think the, the Crab deck is definitely alive and well. This is super fun. I'm not going to lie. I'm enjoying this an awful lot. I'll see you guys for the third and final match. Welcome back to match three. I think we've got a keep here. It's a little bit slow. Again, if my opponent's playing a really aggressive deck, we're kind of in trouble. Although I think our deck's probably not great against aggressive opponents anyway. But we have half of the Arbalist combo, and we have three crabs we can draw to go along with it. Right now we have Coalition Relic, which is good, and Ghost Ship as well. Okay, Loyal Sentry is probably a good sign for us, because that means my opponent's probably trying to play defensively. And I do think we have a good, good odds against most defensive opponents. I'm going to play Island here in case we find Counterspell off the top. I don't think we're cycling Shoreline Ranger. Maybe we should. Oh, we did find Counterspell off the top. It's kind of funny. Rewarded, I guess, for playing our lands correctly. We'll counter anything like sizable here. Uh, yeah, that counts. This has the potential to get in for a lot of damage pretty quick if they like manage to kill off their loyal sentry somehow or something. It makes us kind of in a perpetually awkward spot if we're trying to block. Another island. We're just going to play Coalition Relic here. And we'll, we will remember to tap it this time. I'm going to chant it to myself until the end of my opponent's turn. We're going to tap the Relic. We're going to tap the Relic. Honestly, it may be better just to tap the Relic when we... Ooh, my opponent missed a land drop. It's good for us. All right, and we're adding blue, I guess. Yeah. Found another island. So this turn we could just play Shoreline Ranger pretty safely, probably. Yeah, let's play Shoreline Ranger. And then we don't have to remember to tap the relic, so that's the real victory, right? And hopefully this will help us start putting some pressure on my opponent, who looks like they've got a kind of tough stuff. Tough keep here. Okay, Fiend Hunter wrecks us pretty well. We do have some answers to that in the deck, including just the Arbalist, but... And we still have Ghost Ship next turn. All is not lost. Okay, there's Path of Peace. We could just kill off the Fiend Hunter. Do I like that play? It's okay. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... I don't want to keep up regenerate for ghost ship. I think if my opponent's got removal, they'll just kill the shoreline ranger though. So maybe ghost ship's just better. Which would we rather have? I guess we'd rather have ghost ship than the shoreline ranger. So we should kill this, and then if they have removal, they'll kill off the ranger, and then we can resolve ghost ship. Ooh, that was a lot of talking. All right, let's do that. Uh, oh, okay. Opponent got a little bit of value off that exchange, but we do have our 3 4 back. My opponent's found his fourth land drop Riffin Protector. Okay. That will help keep the Shoreline Ranger at bay. This is one of our creature enters, right? Yeah. Add some blue. And I guess get in there with Shoreline Ranger. Oh, I guess we want to use our mana effectively. And this lets us keep up Ghost Ship and charge up the Coalition Relic again. My opponent still has more cards in hand, but we're not doing terribly either. It's very possible my opponent just doesn't have any good attacks here. Yeah, they got pretty stuck on mana this game, it looks like. Alright, we got the grab. Nice. 
at blue. Play crab. And swing with, I guess, just shoreline ranger. Play the Arbalist this turn, one, two, three. We can't actually equip quite yet, but then next turn we'll, we'll bring down fire. That does put the ghost ship at risk, but I think if they've got removal, they're killing the horseshoe crab anyway. And this card's so sweet. I'm so happy that this was like the R&D's idea of combo in this set. Ooh, it's a creature ensuring at instant speed. It had to be two to really get us. Oh, okay, just bouncing. Fair enough. Oh, he's playing it twice. Oh, that's sweet. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah, that, that's pretty, pretty solid. I am impressed. Yeah, because he just flashes that over and over. Fair enough, fair enough. Victory enabled for my opponent. Griffin Protector, yeah, Griffin Protector and the Lion is a pretty cool combo. Okay, let's play our Arbalist, and still can keep up Ghost Ship, and that is danger for my opponent. They have to have an answer for the Horseshoe Crab, kind of right now. That was pretty sweet play though, killing off the Shoreline Ranger. Yeah, opponent says cut off from an entire color. Yeah, that's kind of what it looks like there. Wow, okay, well. We've had some pretty fun games mixed in, but we've had a lot of like random mana problems in these games as well. All right, white something. Looks kind of defensive, kind of dirtily. Uh, disenchant might be good since there's likely to be some enchantments. I think I do want Presence of God. I think I maybe should have just had that in over Quicksilver da Dagger all along. Dagger just has been very unimpressive to me, really. It looks like it should be good, but not, not hitting creatures is a big cost. Let's splash for Presence of Gond. I don't think we need anything else. I'm not really sure what the other stuff my opponent's working with is. Yeah, let's just run this back. Eh, hand's okay. We can morph the Zealot. Go ahead and keep... Loyal Sentry again. We'll peck in for a couple points of damage, I imagine. Okay. Uh, Cortisar is pretty nice. I think we're probably on the do not cycle Shoreline Ranger strategy here, but... Shodden Port. So I imagine they're tapping down our island here. Fine. We weren't doing anything with it anyway. Oh, no! Counterspell! Oh! The value. All right, all right. Fair enough. You got me. You got me. So if they want to play anything, though, we can resolve Cortisar here. If they don't want to play anything, it's fine. Okay, there is the promise this time. Did not run the counter spell thanks to the value from the port. Okay, let's play our. Cortasar and find exclude do we care more about or God's willing do we care more about? I think exclude. Opponent still has not found their second land color. Kind of entertaining, but sucks to be them, certainly. Valor and Acros. Whenever a creature is about to control, these creatures get bigger. Alright. So if this ever cracks, that's absurd. <laughs> Everything just gets huge. Pretty cool. This is such a cool card. I really, really do like the like the flavor and the style. Okay, so I can see an argument for just keeping up counterspell and exclude here. Kinda want to play the zealot and then have the option to morph it up going forward. It really just depends on whether my opponent's got a great play this next turn or not. I think I like playing the Zealot. We really have to, I guess we could retraction Helix like the Promise or something. 
And man, my opponent just cannot find his other color. The world may never know. Is this white black, white blue? Who knows? This is gonna enter. My opponent will get the chance to bounce something, targeting the morph. So we could just retraction helix the morph out of the way. I don't actually hate that. And then we're just gonna bounce it back to our hand. My opponent will get to see what it is, but. Oh, it's. Oh no, it's tapped. Oh, it's something sick. Oh. I just was got greedy. I got so greedy. Oops. That was a pretty big mistake. Oops, 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 oops. Yeah, if I'd done the Cortisar, we'd have taken an extra point of damage, or a couple points of damage. But, you know, the Retraction Helix would have worked. <laughs> oh dear, that was pretty bad. Okay. That was pretty bad. Hey, Pwn just tapping down one of our blue sources. Seems fine. We're going to play Planes. And I guess cast Prophetic Prism here. Then have Counterspell up. So even despite that, we may not be out of the game, but that was pretty bad. That was pretty bad. I am unimpressed with myself. That turned from what could have been a pretty sick play into a very unexciting play. One can't find his other land color though, so it's not seeming to matter. Yep, still tapping down island. Matters a lot less now that we have Prophetic Prism. So we could Sift. Or we can just play Arbalist, I guess. Don't really need the Savants right now. Well, I guess if we play Arbalist, we can't keep up Counter Magic. I don't know how much that matters. Oh, he still has to find another land color. We could just play the Savants, although then we can't keep up Counter Spell either. We could cycle Shoreline Ranger. One, two. I really like getting Shoreline Ranger into play, though. I think we're going to take a little bit of a risk and sift here. And hope my opponent doesn't have something absurd. Okay, what do we discard here? I guess just an island, probably. Is island going to be better than Coalition Relic at this point? I don't think so. Saving up just it makes your mana so much cleaner a lot of the time. Being able to, like, delay mana for one turn. All right, let's pass. Hope my opponent doesn't do something absurd. I'm still kicking myself about the retraction helix. It makes sense. It says tap on it, like it's something sick. Obviously, can't tap, but that's just not the way it read in my head, I guess. Uh oh, they found swamp. Okay, cutthroat. It's dangerous, but not absurd. Like as cards as they could have had there. And block the loyal sentry. Okay, yep, tap me down the island. Got me. So this turn, we play Dragon Eye Savants Coalition Relic. Take three, probably. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that lets us keep up Counterspell. And I guess we can actually even kind of disguise Counterspell. That's maybe getting a little bit too sneaky, but... This is not like a set of mana that you look at and it's like, oh, my opponent's holding up Counterspell. Even though that's what we've got. They always can Rashad and port before we, um, before casting something to make sure the way is clear, but. Coalition Relic, already looking good. And I'm sure they're going to use their port here. They did not. Interesting. And we have Horseshoe Crab plus Heavy Arbalist, so that's pretty good. At blue. Right now we've got one, two three, nine mana. We can play Arbalist, 
crab keep up spell. I guess let's play the Arbalist first, because we don't want that countered more than anything else. Or I guess, well, there wouldn't be counter spell, but kill spell. Shot in port, it's fine. Okay, we got the Wombo though. I think we're gonna be able to get there this game. The last card would have to be like Path of Exile or something. And we still have Counterspell. I guess they can tap down something with the port. Oh man, but they didn't. Oh man, they could have gotten us pretty bad there, but they did not use the port aggressively. Yeah, that's going to be costly. Because they even were sandbagging, like they had the out there, but... So, Promise of Bunrai is still going to be kind of annoying. It was not to attack with the Cutthroat. I think that must have been a, a misclick, like click through combat on accident. There's no reason you, like you can't block, there's no reason you ever just don't attack with this card, I think. Okay, opponent concedes on the spot. Everyone fears the crab. <laughs> this was cool. I actually didn't think the deck would have quite enough things to go along with the horseshoe crab, and maybe it didn't. But Arbalist just single-handedly took over multiple games. Uh, we got going with Presence of Gone too. This card was even a little bit more impressive than I thought it was going to be. I figured it was just kind of a, a poor man's Arbalist, and it probably still is, but this uh this does some good work for sure. Quicksilver Dagger was definitely the least exciting. We played Retraction Helix exactly once and played it wrong, but... I mean, outside of that, I think we just had a lot of pretty solid stuff. Biden of Thos obviously didn't do as much work in this matchup. A couple of Swords of Plowshares were good, though. Murder of Crows won us one game. Yeah. I think the deck was pretty solid. Mostly finished off games by executing the Horseshoe Crab combo, but that's what we were hoping for anyway, so... Happy to pick that up. Love the format. I'm probably still going to try and play two or three more drafts of it. It's been a lot of fun from what I've seen. And I, I feel like I'm still pretty early into it too, so there's still some stuff to discover. As always, I really appreciate everyone that's supporting the channel, everyone that watches every video. Thanks so much, you guys rock. I'll see you guys next time.